What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. This is the Franchise Tag Extension Deadline Recap. Ba ba ba. That was a little more ominous. I think we need, like, some action news music. Breach? Why would I know action news music, Brinson? I don't watch the like, news anymore. I, there's no chance that you don't walk around with, like, like action news, like '80s rock jams playing in your head. Dun 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 dun. That was Price is Right though. Price is Right. Hey, we're talking money, man. We're talking contracts. It's perfect. Okay. Hey, get to control the and and spade the what is the pet population? We're doing Price is Right. Oh, Price is Wrong. Anyway. Uh, we're going to talk the, uh, the franchise tag deadline is past 4 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. There was no Dak Prescott deal. However, we did see a contract for uh, Eric Henry. Chris Jones also signed a deal. We'll dive into all of those. But first, make sure and watch us on YouTube. That's right. You can see me every single day wearing a different drab gray T-shirt on YouTube. Uh, you'll be amazed at my ever-growing beard and the beard, the beard of Jared Dubin who's joining us in this show. Uh, Ryan Wilson will pout for you every day on YouTube. Come check it out. And John Breach, for the first time in Pick 6 podcast history, is not wearing a Pick 6 podcast pullover. Turns out that the 42 that he had couldn't last. Uh, go to youtube.com slash pick 6. That's right. We have a custom URL, baby. You'd love to see it. Uh, also, we have one more favorite ask. If you like and listen to this podcast frequently or just started listening to it and listen to it occasionally and like it or even remotely enjoy it, go to this thing called the People's Choice Podcast Awards. They listen to fan votes. And I'm asking for you, if you dig our daily grind, to visit the link in the description of this episode and nominate Pick 6. It's very, very easy. It's a super simple process. You go to the link. And then you sign up and you don't have to like exit and verify and sign back in. You just sign up and can immediately go to the drop downs. Uh, we would love it if you picked us up for the People's Choice Award and the sports category as well. Uh, if we get nominated, if we win this award, we will have a listener party at my house in the backyard, of course. Socially like distant. during a pandemic, Brinson? I said socially distant in my backyard. We won't violate any rules. Are you flying the listeners to your house or do you have to get your own, your, pay for your own expense trip to get there? Uh, own expense trip, but if you want to fly from, but don't fly from Florida. <laughs> What's the bathroom situation? Are you going to let the listeners <laughs> come in? Like, are you going to get that special air filter from the University of Houston? Ooh, that's probably a good idea, Jared Dubin. Um, no, we will probably um, just let people pee in my backyard. That's healthy. I, 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 I'm, I'm all for peeing outside. Yeah, I am too in non-pandemic situations, but I want. Yeah, to maybe I don't want like thirty guests peeing in my backyard. You, you didn't think this through. No, clearly I came up with it on the spot. Anyway, go. Uh, to the link of the he's screen. actually pretty fertile, Brinson. So, like, if you have a garden back there, I'm just yeah, saying. but yeah, but we don't know how much COVID transfers through it or not. If you step on it, who knows? You have to think the corona might be transferable through pee. Although that would make, I would think not actually because. Do you think they checked that out before opening up pools and, and areas where people can swim? The chlorine is a pretty, pretty powerful. It doesn't seem like we've thought about much of anything in terms of opening things up. So, uh, I would agree with that stance, Steven. Uh, I'm just saying, like, you know, you pee in the pool, pee in the shower, no big deal. Pee in the backyard. I guarantee you, in Debo's, uh, he has his a board that has the most random stuff we could talk about to start this podcast. This wasn't on the board. <laughs> like odds for uh, <laughs> odds for how it's going to work. What, uh, Ryan, yeah, do you need a shower? Board? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. I will say this. Uh, God, I've been married forever. I've been married almost 19 years. Um, year That's longer than Sean's been alive. Mm. Yeah. Not we even. It's, we, it's, we call him he who shall not be named. Right. Oh, sorry. Actually, you know what I call I, – I, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before. Maybe I have. But in my phone, I have him listed as Spanky Wankman. So that's what I'm going <laughs> to – But, like, just before I got married, we were living together in Pittsburgh, and my wife caught me peeing in the shower for the first time, and she absolutely flipped out. Like, she's like this – my mom would slap me across the face when I was little if she thought I was doing something like this as a four-year-old. So if she's listening to the podcast and she ain't, 
I'm still peeing in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was surprised to find out that like, it was like only 81% of people. I think there was a, was it Michael Jr. Or is it Levitard show? Maybe it was on the Levitard show. They talked about it. I remember there was, it was a thing on Twitter, peeing in the shower. And it's like, it's like 19% of people said they don't pee in the shower. What are you doing? Yeah. Waste don't it. as in never or don't as in like it's not usual practice? Uh, I think that the, the, the discussion was based on usual practice. Okay. I, mean, I would say <laughs> it's, it's not my usual practice, but I have I think, done it before. I would before. say I have way more showers where I do than I don't, like 10 to 1. I think I'm pretty close to the opposite. Okay. Anyway, you know, Moises <laughs> Alou peed on his hands. To, uh, yeah, I knew that. By the way, Bree should answer the question. No. Oh. I'm Dubin. I'm Team Dubin here. I, uh, yeah. I, it's, not a, it's not a normal practice, You're but if it happens. Shower, so there's nothing I mean, that's not so far from the truth. Uh, all right, let's get to the. Uh, the also, not on the board for uh, Debo's, what will they talk about? Random board. <laughs> yeah, add something new. Debo, how far? No, wait, Debo. I bet, Debo does, I bet Debo does not pee in the shower. He doesn't. I tuned you guys out four minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no, Debo? Yeah. Oh. Oh, all right. Okay. Rule. A rule breaker. You know Debo. And Debo in a whole new light. Okay. Yes, a bright yellow light. Uh, Dak, <laughs> Prescott, <laughs> Dak Prescott doesn't get a deal done. Things got heated late. An interesting report from a friend of the program, Jane Slater, at Slater NFL on Twitter. She said, I'm told Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott was involved in the last mi- at the last minute in an effort to get a long-term deal done, but it was up against the 3 p.m. Central Time deadline per source informed. The deal is between $33 and $35 million annually with $110 million guaranteed. Uh, according to Jane, the deal also included a $50 million signing bonus and $70 million over the first two years. She says, I'm told Dak wanted to get this deal done, but it was just too late per source informed. Okay, so I'm going to take a little victory lap here before you start ranting, Dubin. Got to get our, our – Dubin has a, a Cowboys rant built up. He is a Cowboys fan. He is deeply bothered by the fact that they paid Ezekiel Elliott last offseason and not Dak Prescott. We all agree with that. I've been saying for a few months, and, and, I, and, I, and I said this based on me interviewing Dak at the Super Bowl and sort of just kind of talking with him about, like, contract stuff in very brief window, albeit. But my sense of it was that Dak really wanted to just get a deal done and just be the Cowboys quarterback for the next few years and focus on football and that the Cowboys, what they would offer him was probably enough to get it done for Dak, but – not enough to get it done for his agents. And that sort of seemed to manifest itself where Dak's like, all right, man, let's just get this thing done. And just like, I'll get my cash. I'm going to play this five-year deal or five-year deal out. Uh, the Cowboys wanted five, Dak wanted four, et cetera, et cetera. Um, are you, or do, you, do you think I'm crazy for thinking that, Ryan, that Dak did want to sign the deal, but ultimately his agents were like, look, dude, you can't take us a, a below market value. Actually, I don't. It's funny. I was talking to a former GM about something else, and he mentioned that um, this probably has less to do with Dak and more to do with the agent. Who's, his plan is to, he, his goal is to sign more people. Sure. So if you're getting a run of the mill, ro- uh, run of the, what's that? Is that right? Run of the mill? Yeah, run of the mill deal for your quarterback who's a franchise player, one of the, arguably one of the five, six, seven best quarterbacks in the NFL. What does that say for the kids you're trying to sign or the, or the, 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 former, the NFL players who are looking for an agent that you're trying to sign who want to get paid? And, and, you know, that doesn't concern Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, to your point, probably maybe wants to, would be fine with, with 33, 34, 35 million and just get back to playing football and not have to worry about this. We don't know how much Dak's been involved. Um, I would imagine his agent's much more involved than he is, and he may just be doing his own thing, getting ready for the season. But, yeah, that actually uh, – I am on board uh, with, with your, your theory there. It's certainly not one of the craziest ones you put forward. Yeah, and I'm going to let Dubin rant because he's going to say <laughs> – everything i don't want to take any of his points away other than that the cowboys are completely foolish for not getting a deal done i have too many points um <laughs> it might take me a you, while to get through this. To law Let's... School. provide us a coherent uh, uh closing argument 
or opening statement or whatever the hell it is. Just give us a. Give I us think a, it might be both. It might, you know, be, be an opening statement. I might, you know, impeach some character witnesses. Huh. Like this is gonna be like, let's let's start with what Jane just reported. Like, first of all, I 100% believe that somebody told her that. But the idea that there wasn't enough time to get this deal done is just completely ridiculous on its face. They could have negotiated a deal any time between literally the end of the 2018 season and an hour and two minutes to go. Like that is a long time to get. But um. Can I curse you guys complete me out? Like, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to control myself. You're, Sean used to do it, so. <laughs> okay, there's not going to be that many. I just, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to, like, whew, man. Uh, yeah, so they had, they had, like, a year and seven months to get a deal done. Like, the idea that they couldn't get it done and it came down to the 3 p.m. Central Time deadline today is – like, it's absurd. It makes no sense on any level. And if that's the case, it's, again, it's the Cowboys' fault. Like, if you want to run through all the arguments that people would make about, you know, you can't give Dak this deal. Like, oh, you can't make him the highest paid player in the league. Like, that was the original argument. Well, you know, Mahomes signed last week for $45 million a year and $500 million total. So that's out the window. No matter what deal Dak got, he wasn't going to be the highest paid player in the league. So then if you want to move on to like, well, he doesn't deserve to be the highest paid non-Mahomes player anyway. Like, since when has that literally ever mattered in quarterback contract negotiations? Like, ever. You know, Joe Flacco was the highest paid player in the league. Matt Stafford was the highest paid player in the league. Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo, they were each the highest paid player in the league. Like, that's just how this works. And that was especially true once he signed the tag. Like, tag deals start with an average annual value at an absolute minimum of the average of the first two years in the tag. Like, there's no reason that anybody in the world would agree to a deal for less than that. And for Dak, that was $34.6 million a year with the $31.4 million tag this year and then the $37.7 million tag for 2021 based on the 120% raise. So any deal with an average annual value lower than $34.6 million was an absolute non-starter from the get-go, and he never should have been offered anything, anything below that at any point. So, you know, if they didn't want to make him the highest paid non non Mahomes player in the league, or they didn't want to hit those numbers, they should have paid him before the Seahawks paid Russell Wilson and before the Eagles paid Carson Wentz and before the Rams paid Jared Goff so that at, he would be overtaken as the highest paid player in the league very quickly, but they didn't do that. So there was no choice. And he, there was never a situation where if he was going to agree to an extension that he wasn't going to be the highest paid non Mahomes player in the league. And like, also, if you're the Cowboys in this situation and, you know, you reset the market for Tyron Smith, you reset the market for Travis Frederick, you reset the market for Zach Martin and Zeke Elliott and Jalen Smith and Amari Cooper, and, like, you're drawing the line at you're not going to reset the market for your quarterback, that's, like, incomprehensibly stupid. So, you know, next. Like, it's, it's just completely ridiculous to me. And even if you want to say, like, still, what has Dak done to prove that he's worth even one of those deals? Like, even if you want to say, like, even if that wasn't just the way it worked, like you probably still shouldn't give it to him. Well, I mean, he's played in 64 of 64 games, started all 64. He's 40 and 24, six, six best winning percentage and third most wins in the league in that time, despite only having an above average defense once in four years. He finished, he's won the division twice, finished no worse than eight and eight in all four seasons, despite having obviously one of the worst coaches in the league for all four of those seasons. He's won a playoff game, which the franchise has done exactly twice since 1995. When they finally let him approach the passing volume of other top quarterbacks last season he threw for 4900 yards and 30 touchdowns finished fourth in qbr first in dyar football outsiders sixth in dvoa sixth in passing epa per play he was an mvp candidate for like three quarters of the season like people want to tell you that zeke is the engine of the cowboys offense but if that's true then i want them to tell me why the offense is only good when dak plays well if zeke's the one driving the value then how come the offense was so bad for the second half of 2017 and the first half of 2018 which coincidentally is the only time in his career that dak has struggled and it's somewhere been somewhere between very good and awesome at all other times since 2016 which have coincided with dak playing really well you know the whole zeke carries dak thing leans so heavily on you know, A, the fact that they took Zeke with the fourth pick and Dak in the fourth round, which became irrelevant the minute they both stepped on the field. And then B, that six-game stretch in 2017 when Zeke was suspended. But if you paid any attention to that six-game stretch, then, you know, the first two of those games, they didn't have Tyron Smith either. And in those two games, like, Dak was a disaster, legitimately 
awful, like horrendous. But he was also sacked 12 times on 73 dropbacks. That's a 17% sack rate in a year when the league average was 6.4%. So the dude was literally running for his life in those two games, the first two games that Zeke was suspended. But then Tyron came back, and Dak was like, he was fine. In the other four games of Zeke's suspension, he completed 65% of his passes at 7.8 yards per attempt with an 89 passer rating. That's not like up to his usual standards, but it's totally fine. It's like average to slightly below in a game without, you know, the guy that people claim is the, the best player on the team. And they went three and one in those games anyway. And, you know, Dak has also played two other games without Zeke, but we never hear about those, you know, probably because he went 31 for 52 with 424 yards, four touchdowns, no picks and a 111.4 passer rating. So, you know, again, next, you know, <laughs> oh man. Oh God. On top of all this, you know, the Cowboys floated this ridiculous talking point yesterday about how they simply don't do four year extensions, you know, because they like to spread out the signing bonus and build in restructures and blah, blah, blah. Like, first of all, that's, Here's comes the curse. Like that's stupid. Um, second of all, building in restructures so you can keep pushing your cap issues down the line is really stupid as evidenced by the fact that you were paying out dead money to Tony Romo and Des Bryant two years after they each left the team, which prevented you from building a better roster around your fourth round quarterback who was making less than a million dollars a year for the first three years of his career. That's just a bad way to do business. And then, you know, third of all, it's not even an extension. It's a new deal. You could have extended him last off season, but you lowballed him. So his rookie contract expires and now he's on a now he's eligible for a new contract, not an extension. You know, maybe it's a technicality, but if you're insisting that you don't do four extensions, that's a dumbass technicality too. Also, you literally just extended Blake Jarwin for four years, so you're liars and shut up. Next. Like, whoo, man. Also, like, I'm, oh, I'm not done. <laughs> but wait, there's more? There's, there's more. If they had paid him at literally any time before Mahomes signed his deal, it would already look like a tremendous bargain. Like it would look like even more of a bargain when Watson and Lamar got paid presumably more than Dak, because again, that's just how quarterback contracts work. And it would have been like a massive bargain to begin with. Like we're talking about $35 million a year. That's 17 or 18% of the salary cap. Is there anyone anywhere who thinks quarterbacks account for only 17 or 18% of a team's chances to win? Does that seem right? Like if there's anyone that thinks that, like I want literally every other team in the NFL to hire them because they're an idiot quarterbacks are the biggest bargain in the league right now and it's not close like this should have been a slam dunk deal that they could have done the day after the last of the wills and wentz and golf deals got done four years 144 million 111 million dollars guaranteed that's 36 million in a year highest average annual value in the, in the league by a million and one million more in guarantees than golf and it would already look like a steal and if you're sticking to your stupid you know we don't do four years nonsense like you have to make it worth it for him to take a five-year deal you can't offer a five-year deal with a lower average annual value and less guaranteed money than weston goff and a, like a lower guarantee percentage than ryan Tannehill. that's insulting like it's ridiculous and then all of that is before we even get to like why on earth did they not just prioritize dak last year you know, instead they paid an off-ball linebacker with a possibly degenerative knee who at the time of his payday had played like one okay season and one really good season, but was still a year away from needing to be paid. He then underperformed last year, and that already looks kind of iffy, that deal for Jalen Smith. They also prioritized paying a running back who now has three 300-plus carry seasons under his belt and who was noticeably slower and less explosive last season and was the second-best running back on his own team at breaking tackles and creating big plays. And at the time they paid him, he was A, holding out, and B, had still yet to go a full offseason without hitting somebody and they potentially had four years of team control remaining on him with the final year of his rookie deal the fifth year option and two franchise tags all of which by the way would have cost significantly less than the 90 million dollars that they actually gave him and even if they didn't want to go that route well he would have hit free agency in what's shaping up as like the most oversaturated running back market of all time with dalvin cook alvin kamara aaron jones joe mixon Kenyon drake philip Lindsay, and leonard fournette all potentially set to be free agents next year and guys like Travis Etienne, Kenny Gainwell, Chuba Hubbard, Kylan Hill, Najee Harris, all available in what's looking like, you know, another awesome running back class. So, you know, they could have gotten a significantly better price by waiting, especially since, I don't know, like we're in the middle of a goddamn pandemic right now that might decimate the salary cap. And while that wasn't foreseeable, you know, it was like this deal looking bad within less than a year. 
which it already does. It hasn't even started yet, and the Cowboys have already restructured it. So, you know, they could have Zeke, replaced Zeke for practically nothing with with one of the backs in the draft or for cheap with one of the guys in free agency or replace him for actually nothing with Tony Pollard, who in addition to being better at breaking tackles and creating big plays last year was not the number four overall pick and isn't getting paid $90 million. And so wouldn't cause your coaching staff to force feed him the ball in order to justify those two things. And thus would encourage you to pass more, which is a better strategy anyway, especially since the offense has only been good when the quarterback has been good. So, you know, in the end, they, pay top of market value to two players at the two least valuable player positions in football, both of them at least a year before they had to even think about it. And those two players have significant concerns about either injuries or their behavior off the field or both. And then they lowballed their quarterback, didn't talk extension with their number one receiver or number one corner, three of the, I don't know, five most important positions in the league. And they lost the corner for nothing, had to pay the wide out more than they would have last year. And now they're in a position where they either have to cave to every single one of Dak's demands next offseason, or he's gone after the 2021 season. That's it. They screwed it up, plain and simple. And David, the I don't... government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. I didn't even think Dubin took a breath during that entire rant. And Dubin, let me just say, if <sighs> you need a new team to cheer for, the Cincinnati Bengals... Uh, that bandwagon is filling up fast. Not yeah, come, a lot of room left. Come on over, come on over to the Bengals, <sighs> where their last two starting quarterbacks have threatened to retire <laughs> and been benched for Ryan Finley. <laughs> now, great. let me say something real quick. But uh, hey, one of those guys is on the Cowboys now, and he also has forty wins over his first four years, drink. like uh, Dak Prescott. Uh, let me say this real quick, uh, just to touch on Dubin's point, real quick, and, uh, and that you look at how which point. <laughs> how, how do we grade that rant? On a scale of, uh, you know what it reminds me of? It, it reminds me of Pat Oswalt filibustering Star Wars topic <laughs> on Parks and Rec for five straight hours. That's it's on Parks. Like, didn't he do a? Did he come uh, back to the podium? Because I actually think I have more. Like, <laughs> you know, because no. the reason all of this matters stop. is point. Stop! 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 No, Breach has points to make. Oh uh, no, I was just gonna say, uh, real quick, uh, the, on the contract stuff because. Dak Prescott could have extended his deal after the 2018 season. And at that point, so if, if the Cowboys would have just sat down with Dak Prescott in March 2018, they probably could have said five years, 30, $34.5 million, boom. Everyone signs the contract. Everyone's happy. Because at that time, Aaron Rodgers was the highest paid player in the NFL. He was making $33.5 million a year. And as Dubin mentioned in his rant, the big argument was that, no, you can't make Dak Prescott the highest paid quarterback. And had they done that at the time, as Dubin mentioned, they would look like geniuses now. So the fact they did not want to give him that 34 and a half that would have beaten Rogers deal. And then Russell Wilson would have beat it, you know, two months later. And then all of a sudden Dak's not the highest paid quarterback. So the fact that they've let this languish uh, for two years is really just mind boggling. And now run Dubin's ran again, because that goes perfectly into it. <laughs> I think they could have even, by the way, gotten him for less than Rodgers last year. Like, they could have justifiably said, you know, we're not paying you more than Aaron Rodgers. Like, they could have conceivably gotten him for, like, $31, $32 million a year if they were willing to go there. Yes, absolutely. Look, you got to look at his statistical jump from 2018 to 2019. It is enormous. I mean, he didn't have – he'd been very good. He won Rookie of the Year. I mean, he'd been very efficient and sort of like a Russell Wilson type of progress where – and then in 2019, he just took a massive leap as a passer and put up huge numbers. And even though the Cowboys weren't very good, you could pin a lot of that on Jason Garrett. And, I mean, certainly there is no reason why the Cowboys – should have let Jared Goff and Carson Wentz get paid before Dak Prescott. If you, th this is my whole thing where people are like, well, what if he sucks in 2020? And then he should have signed that deal. It's like, if he sucks in 2020, then the Cowboys are even bigger morons for giving him a hundred million dollars. Also, Dak doesn't suck. Dak is good. <laughs> Dak is awesome. Pay the freaking quarterback the money. There's been like a two game span in his career where he's sucked. And look, Dan Orlovsky, who's been on this program, and I know is a big favorite of Debo's because he trumpets Wentz over Dak, likes to point out well, what was the stat he used on get get up. Yeah, so or, it was uh, no, no, it was the TV. players with uh, more 
turnovers than passing touchdowns against playoff teams. Against playoff teams, which like go ahead and cherry pick the smallest possible sample size with the weirdest possible stat to try and figure out whether a guy is yeah. good or not. Like, what you want to like? Is this like? Orlovsky clutchability? Like, what are we doing here? This, it, I addressed this, by the way, on Twitter yesterday because I saw it again and knew that it was basically about his whole, you know, Wentz is better than Goff thing, which, like, you know, reasonable people, I think, can think that. That's just not a good way to express it. And, you know, the the system I was using, you couldn't search for playoff teams, but I could search for winning teams or for teams with, you know, nine or ten wins or whatever. And Dak had a better pass EPA per play, rush EPA per play, passing success rate, and first down rate on his passes than Wentz against winning teams the last two years. So, like, if you're going to use the small sample, like, at least use the full small sample as opposed to just, like, the plays that were turnovers and touchdowns. You know, like, use at least, like, the holistic – and he was ninth in QBR against those teams, which uh, somebody from ESPN said on Twitter at the same time. But, you know, it's all – like, if you're going to use a small sample, at least use the full small sample as opposed to just, like, 10% of the small sample. All right. We're going to take a quick break unless Ryan wants to say something about Dak. And then we will come I back. I do have one more point if I can oh, get it in before we go. One more point. Only Ryan may make a point before – you know, we'll get to that point in Ryan's thoughts after the break. Okay. So, uh, Dubin actually died during the break. He passed out, he passed out from uh, lack of oxygen to his brain. And, uh, and, and, and so we're doing it. No, I'm just kidding. Dubin is fine. He's here. He's still worked up about it. Um, I'll, let me ask you this before we move on from Dak. And I know Debo, Debo is like, you went to break and then you came back to talk more Dak. Are you bleeping kidding me? What do you, what percent chance do you give Dak Prescott of being on the Dallas Cowboys in 2022? Is that for me? Anybody, all of us. It's a short, well, I guess at this point, game. I'm like 50, 50. Sure. Okay. Breach? 75%. Yeah, 75 is what came into my mind, just because they can franchise him one more time. Now he can... No, 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 no. 2022. Oh, 2022. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. No, he'll be on the Cowboys in 2021. Oh. I, and the people who say, like, what they might not franchise tag him next year. Like, get the hell out of here, pal. They're franchise tag. What are they going to... Like, they're going to drag Quincy Carter's corpse back up and, like, see if he can play? They're franchising Dak a second time. Oh, By the way... That's my next point. <laughs> uh, they don't need to bring Quincy Carter's course because they have the best backup quarterback in the NFL Brinson, on a one year deal. So they'll have to pay him to resign him for $5 million. By the way, the only, I believe the only two quarterbacks who have ever played out a season on the franchise tag prior to Dak Prescott doing so in 2020, if there is a season were Drew Brees in 2005 with, with the San Diego chargers and Kirk Cousins, who did it twice with the Washington Redskins, you will notice that neither one of those guys were on the team after they played out their final franchise tag year. Joe Flacco played, the, the, must have been the, the fifth year of his rookie. Remember, he played the, the fifth-year option, bet on himself. It wasn't the franchise. That's, that's different, though. They, when you're playing the fifth-year option, you have two tags left. I mean, when you tag somebody, a quarterback, and then don't give them a contract, I mean – I'm trying to think of the appropriate way to to, to, to breach. You're the metaphor guy uh, or analogy guy. I don't I don't know which is which. Sometimes, how how would you put this in relationship terms? I don't know what I'm putting in relationship terms. When you tag would, Dak Prescott, but then don't give him a big contract. Oh, like, this is like you're thinking about proposing, but you just you keep leading your girlfriend on and saying, not, "Hey, you know what." Funny. I'm going to propose next year, and then all her friends get engaged, and all of a sudden she wants out of the relationship. It's like showing her the ring you bought and then not proposing. Like, hey, check this out. Or See taking that? her to the ring store. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Ring shopping and then not never – like, if you go you ring shopping and you never ring on it. Again. And yeah. every time she's like, when are, we get, when are you going to propose? You're like, what are you talking about? And, and here's like, the what thing. What if I gave you a ring pop instead? <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's or, kind of feels like they gave Or – what if instead of proposing, I made you a batch of brownies and left them in the fridge and said, will you marry me on uh, – Nine iTunes? years later? Bliss well, I just want to say real quick, it's funny that Ryan brought up Flacco because that's what this kind of feels like. It's turned into Dak betting on himself, and it could go one of two ways. If the Cowboys win the Super Bowl in 2020, Dak is going to – he can ask for Patrick Mahomes money or he can just bolt town. Obviously, the Cowboys can hit him with that tag, and then he'll bolt after that if they don't pay him Mahomes money. But if they go like six and ten or seven and nine, that's where things will get a little dicey 
John, let, uh, me, let, me, let me push back on that, though. Let's say they go 6-10. and 10. Let's say Dak has his worst season. He plays slightly above average, according to Football Outsiders or PFF or whomever. If you're the Bears or you're the Jaguars, are you paying him 38 to $40 million a year in free agency if they decide not to come back? I, I, I would need to see some clarity on the salary cap situation before I make him an What's offer of $40 million cap? per year. Was it, was it typically go up percentage-wise? Do you know the salary usually, cap? It usually goes like up like 10 a year. Like ten to twelve million. All right, let's say it goes up five million. So it's like one hundred ninety-eight million. Yeah. Why wouldn't the one ninety-three this year? Jaguars pay him thirty-eight to forty million a year if he comes off a crappy, slightly above average season. Why wouldn't the Patriots? Patriots. Yeah. Also, they can do that and you know backload it, so they're not paying forty million in the first year. So my my point is, I don't think it matters how bad Dak plays next year unless he plays like a left-handed Andy Dalton. Nice. Yeah, the, <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, that's the arguments that I've seen on Twitter. And I, I realize that Twitter is a cesspool and a hellhole and full of Cowboys fans um, <laughs> who, do, who don't like masks. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, I'm not sorry, I know. The, the arguments I've seen are like, what if Dak gets hurt? And what if Dak plays like crap? Uh, my argument on the hurt thing is that you really need an Alex Smith level injury to completely tank your value. Like, I think if Dak tore his ACL, in the second half of the season, he would still get a big contract in free agency. Am I crazy for the thinking that? Not no. at all. I mean, Deshaun Watson came back from a torn ACL and was like the third best quarterback in the league the next year. Right. Like, if if he tears his ACL, I don't Chris, know. Look at it this way. And this is what we said in the spring. ACLs, we understand if Tua had torn his ACL, he's definitely a top five pick. Where did Tua get drafted? On a crazy hip injury that no one knew how it was going to play out. Number five. Yeah. I mean – I think that Dak, short of, short of like, I mean, really, it has to be something like an Alex Smith level thing or, you know, the Breeze stuff, I guess, it's like a Breeze shoulder type of injury. Like if he tears his shoulder labrum, his right labrum, maybe that's it. Um, but Dak has played every single game of his career that he's been needed to play. He, he hasn't missed time because of injury. He's incredibly durable. He's, he's only a, missed like one practice. Yeah, he's a big physical guy who – not only avoids contact, unnecessary contact, but takes contact really well. Like, he's smart about taking shots. He doesn't get big hits in it. Like, he's, he has very good pocket presence, I think, as well. Like, you don't even see him taking the shots that Cam Newton used to take um, while he was sitting in the pocket or while he's running the football. Like, Dak is a bigger, taller, stronger Russell Wilson, in, I think, in terms of how he handles contact. I don't, I'm not worried about him getting injured. Yes, freak injuries can happen, but I think it's very unlikely that that causes him to lose market value. Uh, uh, yes. Let me just throw one more thing because we talked about how they should have gotten a deal done before all these other quarterbacks. Now the one to watch is Deshaun Watson because if Deshaun Watson goes there and signs a $40 million deal, then Dak Prescott's absolutely getting $40 million. I think that's you know because he's not going to get Patrick Mahomes money, but no. Deshaun Watson's contract, now the Cowboys have to be thinking, we – better hope Deshaun does not get a new contract this offseason because we need to get a deal done before Deshaun does. Well, yeah, but preach. I mean, presumably the Cowboys are having that conversation about Patrick Mahomes, right? I mean, why do they care about Deshaun Watson's deal or Lamar Jackson's well, deal? Well, because they're having a conversation about Deshaun Watson now. Like, it's Apparently a- they weren't having these conversations. If they were, they would have gotten the deal done. And, and I would say the other thing, too, is that, like, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Ryan made a joke and, and, and All right, let me say one thing then. Like, if they're concerned about injuries, why did they pay a running back and a guy with a degenerative knee? Also, like, if you're concerned that they're going to be so bad, like, what reason is there to believe that they're going to go like two and fourteen? They haven't gone worse than eight and eight in any of any year of his career. And like, I don't know, people universally consider this like the most talented team they've had in those four years. Like, maybe they maybe it won't be the best team. They've gone thirteen and three in one of those years, but like the likelihood of them going like two and 14, three and 13 to the point where they're going to get like one of the top picks in the league next year seems pretty low. Right. And like, you know, th- that's where I think where we get, get to why all this matters for the people who go like, Oh, well, Dak's not that good. Like they could easily find a cheap quarterback to replace him. And, you know, to that, I'm like, you know, like, let me put my Seth and Amy hat on here when I'm like, really, really, really? Like they could easily, find a cheap quarterback to replace him like do you have any idea how bad the cowboys have been at identifying good quarterbacks in the draft and free agency like they yes they had eight men they're two best quarterbacks of the past 20 years they really just fell back asswards into they- exactly and the, and the other one was a number one pick who everyone and their mother would have taken who's the oh, 
I mean, Troy Aikman. Aikman. Like, they took Troy Aikman the number one overall pick in 1989. Like, everybody would have taken him there. I'm not giving them credit for being like, oh, Troy Aikman is a good prospect. Like, like, give the Colts credit for identifying Peyton Manning. Or Andrew Luck, right. That was Jimmy Johnson making the calls back then. Additionally, you have the only reason they found Tony Romo is because he went to the same college as their offensive coordinator, Sean Payton, who would have ended up somewhere else. And the only reason they got Dak Prescott is because the Broncos traded up and grabbed Paxton Lynch, and then the Raiders traded up and grabbed Connor Cook. And so Jerry panicked and pulled the trigger on Dak. And look, no one thought Dak was going to be awesome. I wrote a story before Tony Romo got hurt outlining the best, the ranking every backup quarterback situation and had the Cowboys – dead last because he was Dak was behind Kellen Moore until Kellen Moore then got hurt and Dak just had to play they didn't even know what they had from Jump Street that's how bad they didn't know what they had in Romo either they sat Romo for three years behind like I have the list here like uh, Quincy Carter, Ryan Leaf, Anthony Wright, Drew Henson, Chad Hutchinson, Vinny Testaverde, and Drew Bledsoe and those are just the guys that got on the field they sat out for three years behind those guys All right. and the other point I was going to make I remembered it sorry so now you've gone from all right, we're having a discussion about guaranteed money. He is owed $68 million over two years because of the two franchise tax, presumably. Now, the Cowboys can tag him a third time. However, if they do that, the, the price goes up to $53.3 million, $54 million, whatever it is. It's 144%. And it actually could be more if Watson and Lamar Jackson sign new contracts before the tag. Let me ask a question that you're not prepared for. What does that three-year average out to per year, do you know? Uh, oh yeah, that's the like over forty. The classic oh, I think it's like forty-one, hundred and twenty-three plus thirty-one. One yeah, I'll say one twenty-three divided by three. Forty-one 41. million dollars per year. No, they so, don't. So what are we doing exactly? Just get him for thirty-five. Why is my wife calling me in the middle of this podcast? <laughs> tell her to call. Tell her to call the Skype line. We'll get her on the I was podcasting. She knows how long it takes me to podcast. AK from Raleigh, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pick up. And she's like, how many of the 14 franchise tag guys have you gotten through? And you're going to be like, uh, one. And, Sorry, and that's little, my fault. <laughs> what does she know that we have a Dubin length rant for each one of the guys on this list? So anyway, the, the long story short is that what, while no one on this podcast, no one on this podcast disagrees that the Cowboys are idiots, as I said back in March. And – I won't take you seriously as a football fan or someone who watches football if you think the Cowboys were in the right here. That's, that's where I'm at on this. Like, if, you, if you're standing – and I'm not talking about, like, reporters because there, like, there are plenty of people who are reporting things and they're getting stuff from the Cowboys and et cetera, et cetera. I'm not, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who think the Cowboys did the right thing here because they didn't. They screwed this up, and if it ends up with Dak Prescott leaving – before 2022 or after 2021, then they deserve the exact same criticism, vitriol, shame, disrespect, disregard for their organization that was pounded on the Redskins when they let Kirk Cousins walk. And they deserve it even more because Dak Prescott's a better player than the Redskins. And I hope that he goes and signs with some team in the division, whether it's the Eagles, <laughs> I don't know if he signed with the Eagles. I hope he signs somewhere, and I hope he wins a Super Bowl somewhere else, and the Cowboys have to watch him. I hope the Super Bowl that he wins for his next team is in Cowboys Stadium, and Jerry has to reap what he sows because he's too cheap to give Dak $35 million a year. It's ridiculous. Let's talk about Derrick Henry. That was a pretty good rant, too. Yeah, that was good. I liked it. Uh, dude, dude, dude was smiling. Got me all, got me worked up too. Uh, okay, so Derrick Henry, four years, fifty million dollars breach. Uh, you're the Nashville correspondent. Uh, I think twenty five million dollars guaranteed basically equates out to two franchise tags for Derrick Henry. So it seems like he sort of took a two year deal with two team year options. Uh, we've about right? talked about the Derrick Henry deal, uh, uh, potentially getting a deal multiple times over the past few months. And, you know, there's always that thought process that you don't want to overpay a running back. I actually love this deal for both sides. As you mentioned, Brenton, if they had franchise tagged him in 2020 and 2021, that would have been $22.6 million guaranteed. Henry got $25.5 million guaranteed. So they threw a little uh, bonus on top of that to keep him happy. And look, there aren't too many offenses in the NFL that absolutely revolve around the guy in the backfield, but the Titans are one. If you take Derrick Henry out of this offense, it falls apart. It's not going to work. 
And so I think that Tannehill and Henry are just like the super tandem, uh, you know, because I think Tannehill is just as important in the office as Derrick Henry. Uh, but where, you know, Dude was talking about how important quarterbacks are earlier, you know, and most of the time it, it's the quarterback is 80% important, the rest of it 20%, but it's closer to like 60, 40. I just think Henry, his value is very high in this Titans offense. And, uh, you know, if he only ends up playing two years there and you give him 12, 25 and a half million, that's 12.75 million per year. So now he's not in Christian McCaffrey range. He's not in Ezekiel Elliott range. He's the fifth highest paid running back based on average annual value. So I don't think the Titans overpaid. I think 12 and a half million, which is the average of this contract. I think that's right in the sweet spot. Uh, so I think this is a good deal for both sides. You know, it's funny. Um, our buddy Joel Corey, he was on the podcast earlier this week, I believe, uh, with you, Wilbur, talking about Dak. But he tweeted this out on Wednesday before um, before we knew the details of Derrick Henry's deal. Chris Johnson got a four-year, $53.975 million extension with $30 million in guarantees from the Titans in 2011. That worked out to $13.49 million a year. So here we are nine years later. Uh, Derrick Henry's deal is is about a million less per year than what Chris Johnson got in the heyday for running backs, maybe even a little past the heyday for running backs. I, I'm sort of with Breach. I mean, $12.5 million is a lot. It's a two-year deal. He was a workhorse last year. They're not beating the Ravens. They're not beating the Patriots without Derrick Henry. You're not doing that um, with Deion Lewis or someone who isn't Derrick Henry dragging those off, uh, defenses up and down the field. Can he last for two more years? I have no idea. Probably not. But I think that's something you're willing to take a flyer on at 12 and a half million. And Breach mentioned that he's fifth now. He's behind Christian McCaffrey, Zeke Elliott, Le'Veon Bell, and David Johnson. You could argue he's probably the second best running back on that list. You can make a case that he and Zeke are, are in, the, in that conversation, but he's making substantially less um, than Zeke and Christian McCaffrey and a million or so less per year than Le'Veon Bell and, and David Johnson, who clearly shouldn't be on the, the list in terms of salary. Yep. I'm with you guys. I expected to hate this deal, and I think it's actually really good for the Titans, like, especially once they signed that franchise tag, like this was the only way that they were going to get him was to give him, you know, a little bit more in terms of the average annual value than the the average of the two tags. Like I said, when I was talking about Dak and they basically got him for that and nothing more, like nothing beyond that is guaranteed. Like if you're doing a running back deal, this is the way to do it. You give them the two tag years in terms of the guaranteed money and nothing beyond that is guaranteed and you can get it out of it at that point. You know, like you guys said, he's so important for their offense and while you know a running based offense is not very likely to be as efficient as a passing based one there are exceptions and especially when the titans get a lead derrick henry is that exception like i saw earlier this offseason he averages something like 5.9 yards per carry when the titans have a lead it's ridiculous he just runs over and through guys and like they gave him almost no more money than they would have had to give him on the two tags and there's nothing guaranteed beyond that. They're not tied necessarily all that long term. I think this worked out really well for them. By the way, Spot Track, who who does uh, they do market value um, estimations of what players are worth for an idea of how much we like this deal and we're not complaining about it. They had uh, Derrick Henry's calculated market value 13.8 million per year on a four-year deal, 55 million total. So they came in under that. Derrick Henry seemed to understand that the Titans obviously are okay with it, and I'm sure Ryan Tannehill is probably happier than anybody. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that you want to lock up. I don't know. It's a weird one. Henry, I don't know. I think normally I would say, okay, this guy's the amount of um, carries and touches and all that that Derrick Henry had, it really, you expect injury. But he, for whatever reason, I mean, not for whatever reason, because he's just a man child. I always feel like if there's a guy who's going to buck that trend. It's Derrick Henry. And so much of what they do want to do revolves around the power run game now, I mean, having said that, if the defense takes a step back for Tennessee, they're going to be forced to throw more. Uh, you know, he wasn't necessarily um, effective, as effective early in the season. Like, he was great down the stretch. I, I don't know. There's, there's certainly questions about it. But as far as the price tag for what the Titans are getting and the player that they're getting and how he fits with that team, I'm fine with it. Chris Jones signed a contract. Uh, he got paid – let's see, we were recording this on Wednesday. He got paid on Tuesday – and got a lot of money from the Kansas City Chiefs. Do you like the deal, Dubin? Yeah. I mean, they got him for, like, essentially the same price, I believe, as DeForest Buckner. So that's right in line with what you're getting as, you know, a really good, you know, interior pressure guy. So I think that worked out well. I think that 
you probably knew this was coming when you saw the structure of the Mahomes deal where his cap hit didn't go up at all in the first three years of the deal. It was basically like a pretty clear sign that they were going to try to fit a three or four year deal for Jones on the books. He's really, really good. Just like one of the best interior pressure guys in the league. And now they have, you know, two really good pressure guys up front with him and Frank Clark for the next three, four years. You know, they have, you know, other, I think holes that they need to fill on their defense, but they're going to be so good offensively that if they can just approach average on defense, they're going to be so good for, you know, the foreseeable future. Yeah. I don't know if anyone who hates this deal. And I think, you know, we talked about it on HQ that, um, we knew, and Devin just alluded to it, the structure of Mahomes' deal will allow them to sign these players. All these players are in their 20s. They're all under their prime. And even if you only get two or three years out of this current crop and they get to the Super Bowl two times, who gives a crap? I mean, it's worth it. And um, Chris Jones, number two on my uh, defensive tackles best ever list or best going into 2020 list only behind Aaron Donald. So, clearly, I'm pretty smart. <laughs> uh, and can we just not forget that the Kansas City Chiefs had $177 in salary cap space on March 30th. $177. They couldn't even buy a new Nintendo Switch. Like, that is how little. Brett Veach has just been all over the place making deals, wheeling and dealing. Uh, You know, they got the Mahomes deal, and now they get this done. So it was just huge. And, uh, you know, Chris Jones – yeah, exactly. Somehow the magician just keeps pulling, making money appear out of nowhere, keeps making cap space appear out of nowhere. But Chris Jones was just so huge for the Chiefs. Uh, unsung hero of Super Bowl 54. I think I mentioned earlier this week that, you know, he had a few big plays in that game. He kind of forced Jimmy Garoppolo into that ugly interception in the second half. He had two batted passes uh, in the waning minutes of the fourth quarter as the 49ers were driving down to try and score. Uh, so uh, he played a huge role in that game, and he's been a huge – for this defense for the past few years. Yeah, there's a great Instagram post on the Pick 6 podcast feed that Debo points out. Uh, our social team does a great job at Pick 6 Pod on Instagram. Please follow. Follow uh, me at Will Brinson if you want pictures of my kid and dog. Food. Yeah. Um, they put, but they point out uh, Sammy Watkins restructured his contract. That saves $5 million bucks, And then the Mahomes thing didn't actually hurt them in terms of the numbers. So they were able to sign Chris Jones. And I, I think it's a great deal. I felt like once they sign Mahomes, it's almost like you can't give Mahomes $500 million and expect Chris Jones just to be like, oh, that's cool that you're not paying me, but you gave him 10 years? He didn't have to pay him for two years, but sure. Uh, All right. Also signing a contract, according to the actual team, I believe, the Cleveland Browns announced that Miles Garrett signed a contract extension. I have not to be perfectly honest, this happened like right as we were starting the podcast. Um, so I'll read the quote while someone tells me the numbers on the five-year contract extension for Miles Garrett. One of our fundamental organization beliefs is identifying young players on our roster and proactively retaining them as part of our present and future core. We go through great lengths to select players whose makeup and performance embody the characteristics we are looking for within our team. Today, we're delighted that Miles Garrett, helmet swinger, will be a Cleveland Brown for many years to come, said Andrew Barry, the Browns EVP of football operations and GM. He did not say helmet swinger, but – you know, that sort of thing is lingering out there. It would not have given me pause to sign him to a huge deal, however. Miles Garrett is a super budding superstar, a young player who's on average all borderline close to a sack a game. I think it's like 31 and a half in 37 games. Um, suspended last year, but easy to pay him in my mind. 10 games last year, 10 sacks. Number two on my edge rushers list behind arguably the best player in football, T.J. Watt. Um, interestingly, TJ Watts uh, lists as an outside linebacker, and we're seeing this now with Shaquille Barrett and Bud Dupree. Um, Miles Garrett is a defensive end, I believe. His five-year extension, $125 million, according to Ian Rappaport, NFL.com. Uh, $25 million in new money per year. We're talking about, I think, um, John Clayton said this on Pittsburgh Radio on Wednesday. He thinks that TJ Watt will get 16 to $17 million a year. So we're talking $8 million less per year based on your uh, designation, position designation. Um, compared to a guy you're just as productive as. So that's something to look for, uh, look out for. And also as we wait to see what happens with Shaq Barrett and Bud Dupree based on their franchise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. John Clayton said he thinks T.J. Watt will get 7 to $8 million less 16, per year. Yeah, yeah, right. 16 to $17 million no per way. year. No way. I mean, I, I, I love I, – John Clayton's awesome. And, by the way, I've, I've been on his podcast a couple of times. For whatever reason, he likes me too. Humble brag. Uh, I mean, John Clayton's the OG, man, the professor. There's no way T.J. Watt gets seven to eight million dollars less per year than Miles Garrett. No way. But there's a reason 
that these players are angry about the the stupid. They was just get a new CBA and they could so bang out this wrinkle where you allow edge rushers to to be classified in a group instead of linebackers and, def- and defensive linemen. But the other part is that the Miles Garrett contract is almost like the Mahomes contract. He just blew by the next closest contract. He set the record for the highest paid defensive end. I think the next highest one was DeMarcus Lawrence at 21 million. And now the Browns are giving him $25 million per year. That's an insane number to be up there. So it's not surprising to hear that TJ Watt might be that much lower just because Garrett's number is so insanely high. If I'm the Browns, you know, like I, I do think this is absolutely a deal that needed to get done eventually because Miles Garrett is so good, but I'm not sure you had to do it right now. He's coming off a six game suspension, you know, for the Mason Rudolph thing, obviously. And he's only three years into his deal. This almost never happens with defensive players getting a new contract after their third year. I could only think of, uh, you know, Luke Keekley, JJ Watt, and I think Patrick Peterson, literally since that 2011 CBA, that's pretty much the list of defensive. Von Miller, Von Miller did he get it after three years? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm just asking. Did Aaron right. Donald? There might be one more. I think no, there's one more. Donald, remember, Donald held no, out. No, he, he held out because he yeah. ended up getting it after his fourth year. Um, but, yeah, so the list is incredibly small. So it just didn't feel like it made sense to give him all this money after this six-game suspension. I would have let him play one more year, make sure his head's on straight, you know, make sure nothing crazy like this is going to happen again, and, and then give him this extension next year as long as he has a big – there was no rush to get it done, you know, because if, oh, right. if you're making him the highest paid player, this isn't a Dak Prescott situation where you're, you don't think he should be it. They obviously thought he deserved it. Uh, I, I, I just would have waited a year. So I right. made this. If he had 20 sacks this year, would they have had to give him like $27.5 million? A yeah, year? I know, too? for like, real. There was no universe where that was happening. Right, right, right. So I, I sort of made this point on, I don't remember. It was on HQ on, on Tuesday evening when there were rumors about it. And, I, and, I, and I'm not questioning uh, rap sheets reporting here but when you start hearing uh, when when you hear 125 million over five years with 100 million dollars guaranteed and it's 24 hours in advance of the actual contract being done to me that reeks of agent shenanigans where an agent is floating out these numbers because again I, i'm with breach like you didn't need to sign him to this deal this is the deal you can sign him to next offseason like that's and and the agent is so proud of the fact that he took it that's how a deal leaks this early because you know we've seen contracts where we don't see the numbers till 24 hours after they come out but when they come out this early it makes you think ah the agent thinks hey we really took advantage of the browns here we got 25 million per year well, no, no, no. I'm getting him signed is good but it just doesn't seem like they had to go and beat the market by this much this soon what i'm saying is that i think that there's a chance that the numbers are not what we've been told there. Because I don't think anybody's actually seen the contract. Like the contract. Maybe the guarantees are a little lower or the 25 million per year is a little bit lower. Or uh, maybe the 25 million is there, but it's not. I mean, like, do you really think four of the five years are guaranteed? The contract doesn't kick in until 2022. Why would That's they probably guarantee- like the practical guarantee and not like the guarantee That's what I'm for saying. injury? Like, I bet the true injury guarantee is something like thirty-five million dollars, and the practical guarantee is a hundred million dollars. Meaning, if Miles Garrett plays and he doesn't hit Mason Rudolph with helmets and he doesn't get injured, <laughs> then the the Browns will eventually pay him this money over the course of the deal. It do- it doesn't make any because this is this is just not when you give this deal to the player. You give like you don't after the third year coming off suspension, as Breach points out, you, you do this deal if you're getting him for $20 million a year. You know what I mean? Or like I wouldn't be surprised million. if that's what it was in like the first three, like, you know, three years, the first three years are like $60 million, and then there's like big balloon payments right? And um, where you could restructure it at that point. Right, restructure it or even cut him. I mean, the other thing too is that like, I mean, this matters, but Miles Garrett, I believe, is – currently 24 25 he's older like he's oh, he might be older than daniel hunter he's 24 okay he's not older than daniel hunter but i mean he's you know he's going into his fourth year and he'll turn 25 seem so, old for his fourth year right no but i'm just saying like he didn't he wasn't drafted at, at 20 or 21 right he was you know he's he, maybe 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 he was i don't know it, it, anyway like i'm saying <laughs> 
he'll be 25 when this at some point in the season. Yeah. Right. And then he still covers another, essentially his prime, right? But like then he has another he has another year on it where he'll be 26, and so then your five years gets you to 31. Like to me, there ha- there's the Browns can't be that stupid. Andrew Barry went to Harvard, Yale. I think he went to Harvard and Penn. They went to two schools, I think. But yeah, Harvard game Mellon. <laughs> and it looks like Garrett's deal was fifty million dollars fully guaranteed at signing. Uh, See, that is very, very different than a hundred million guaranteed. No, so and a like hundred million in total guarantees, and those are practical guarantees. If that's where you're going to make that, practical guarantees usually are are pretty. I mean, the reason they're called practical guarantees. No, so I, I, but I bet it's something like the Browns have to decide by the third year of the, the third day of the league year, a season before whether or not they want to pay him $25 million in like 2027 and 2028 would be my guess. Right. And then, well, if it is the third year, then if, if you get rid of him, he walks with two years and 50 million and he's happy because he got his 25 million per year. Uh, so then he wins anyway. Cause then he's back as a free agent. There's something, so. there's something fishy about this. All right. We'll keep an eye on it. So Shaq Barrett, you, mentioned, he's, I, you guys are just dismissing. You're like, oh, no, Miles Garrett, she's getting 125. Like, no, that's, I brought it up. I said it's weird to do the deal now. It doesn't make any sense. There's something fishy about this. Nope. Andrew Barry is like just handing out that cash. The it's Browns do here. have a ton of cap room. Maybe they just didn't know what to do with their money. So they said, Miles, just take it off our hands, man. We don't want it. I mean, but if they have if, a salary cap floor issue, why did they give him? F- Maybe that's that could be it. Why would they give him four million dollars above market value? I mean, is there, are there a bunch of edge rushers coming up that are gonna? I mean, the the Vikings signed Daniel Hunter to fourteen million dollars a year. <laughs> Maybe they just wanted to get it done before like Joey Bosa. I'll just and real quick, the the Browns have thirty eight point seven million dollars in cap space before the Garrett deal, uh, according to Over the Cap. Only two teams even have over twenty five million in cap space right now. That is Cleveland at thirty eight point seven. And Washington at thirty six point five. Everyone else is under twenty five million. I, I just think like you don't get like don't you get this deal done at twenty two million dollars a year? I mean, you would think. And a year from think, now. yeah. I mean, I think a year from now maybe it's twenty five, especially if both signs to a big deal. But like, I just feel like you could get if there's something that doesn't add up to this. Maybe I we're wanna, just focusing. I want to see the details, and I will be um, vindicated. Vindicated, thank you. I was, maybe, no, maybe, I we're focusing, maybe we're focusing too much on the new money. And if you throw in his rookie contract, because it's an extension, it becomes, you know, a seven-year deal worth whatever amount of money. I think 145 Okay. Which is not $25 million a year. It's like just out the 21 hmm. So, in other words, you're like, listen, we'll give you this deal now, but we're going to pay you 21 over the lifetime of this contract. That's That's – that's a little more palatable if you're the Browns. Are they tacking it on to the fifth-year option, or did it replace the fifth-year option? They yeah, see, we, too. yeah we, don't, we don't know that yet. No, 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 it is an extension. It doesn't kick in until uh, 20. Right, but an extension after the third year can replace the fifth-year option. Yeah, uh, we need we to find rap sheet. Rap sheet said that he's under contract through 2026. So it would be 2020 is his fourth year, 2022. One so that's seven years, so that means yeah, so, yeah, it's tacked so it's after, the fifth, year after option, yeah. the fifth year option. So, yeah, I okay, mean, so that makes more sense because the average annual value is like just out of 21. No, right. no, it's actually, it's actually, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, 20.71 million dollars, roughly. So, that's right at the top end of the market. And what, what, what are the what's the franchise tag number for defensive ends right now? Uh, I think 17.8. So, so you'd be looking at seven. Let's say, it's, let's say it's 19 by the time he would have gotten franchise tagged in three years. Let's say it's 20. I think that's fair, right? Sure. All right, let's say it's 20. So then you'd be 20, 20 million plus 22 million. So you're at 42 million guarantees. So I mean, like, all right, maybe that, you know, you're I – mean, 44, you know, 20, and then 24 because it's 20%. I don't, hold on, hold on. The franchise tag is 15.8 million for Shaq Barrett. So that's Shaq Barrett's outside linebacker. Yeah, oh. he's, he got tagged as a linebacker. Yeah, uh, I was looking at Yannick and Gakwe's, and that's seventeen point okay. eight. Yeah, Yannick seventeen point eight. So let's let's say it's twenty. So then you'd be looking at twenty and twenty four. So that's an average of twenty two million a year plus forty four million guaranteed. That starts to make a little more sense from the Browns' perspective. It sounds like they just negotiated logically instead of trying to hold a good young player over the barrel. Like I told you ten minutes ago, no one listened. 
Who does that? All right. What would you say, Wilson? Something stinks. Uh, So the guys who didn't get tagged, there's a lot of them. Thought it might be more. We mentioned Dak Prescott. Dubin, do you have any? No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I have uh, no thoughts. Yeah, so Yannick Ngakwe did not get done. Apparently, the Jaguars, according to a report, have turned down a deal that included a Pro Bowl player. What do you think about that, Ryan? Uh, Spanky Wankman was hoping that Pro Bowl player was Mr. Bisky, uh, but it, didn't, <laughs> <laughs> it did not work out for the Bears. So, I don't know. I don't know why you, you wouldn't try to move Yannick Ngakwe. He doesn't want to be there. You drafted Josh Allen last year. You drafted um, – the kid from LSU this year in the first round, you have edge rushers move on and, and start over. Cause you have a lot of holes to fill, but you know, they decided to do something differently. And Doug Marone has to win a lot of football games. And like, what do you think Yannick Ngakwe is thinking right now? It's like, Hey, Jacksonville, you've literally traded everyone who wants out Jalen Ramsey, AJ boy, Clay is Campbell. Oh, everyone is just being sent out of town. And Ngakwe is the one guy uh, who can't get shipped out. So it is really weird. He doesn't want to play for the team. And you would think that the Jaguars would take any sort of comp- compensation they can get. But it's like, no, we're going to let this guy play for our team. He's going to be completely bitter about it. It's going to probably ruin the chemistry in our locker room. But we don't care. We're just going to – we're doing it. And he's, he needs to play six, game, or, uh, six games in order to qualify for an accrued season and not, not have to – redo the franchise tag again the next year in theory they could uh rescind it or let him go he hasn't signed it obviously i don't understand why they think uh, they got great value for jalen ramsey he was under contract for multiple years left on his rookie deal when they traded him you just have to suck it up and take a third round pick for yannick that's i don't know why if they got a fourth round pick or better that's the equivalent of getting the third round pick as a comp pick a year later like I don't know what they think they're getting for him in a deal here. Like everybody knows he doesn't want to be there. They're not getting a first round pick. Right. It, it really makes no sense to, to do what they did. Um, also, AJ Green, Breach, I assume you were not surprised that AJ Green did not get a deal done. No, I was not surprised at all. I just don't think the Bengals could justify signing him to a long-term deal just because of the injury history he's had over the past three or four years. Uh, well, I, I think, in, in, in his defense, he was injured because the Bengals in the NFL rolled out into a, a cheap field on Dayton for the, to celebrate some phony anniversary. Uh, and he, in, it was improperly taken care of because the Bengals, again, cheap. Um, and that's why A.J. Green got hurt. And they said, F y'all, I'm not coming back to play for this scrub-ass team that's being led by Andy Dalton to zero wins and, uh, and just sat out the season. Oh, well, first of all, Brinson, it had nothing to do with the Bengals being cheap. It had to do with it was the 100th anniversary of the NFL. And so they had the team's practice at some weird location. So the Bengals went to a park in Dayton where the Dayton Triangles held their first practice uh, some 100 years ago. Brinson, that is your favorite team. What? How many of the 30, how many, how many teams were around 100 years ago? How many of those teams went to some random park where their first practice was held 100 years ago and, and t- far took into practice? This is classic Bengals. <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying to imagine Jerry Jones being like, yeah, sure. We'll go practice at like, you know, North Dallas High School tomorrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> the Bengals are the true factor. Okay, so I'll, I'll say real quick with A.J. Green is that you just couldn't do the deal because, you know, he missed the entire season in 2019. He missed seven games in 2018. He missed six games in 2016. So this is what you do. You give him the franchise tag. You see if he gels with Burrow. If he puts up big numbers with Joe Burrow, you give him extension next season. If he doesn't, then you wave goodbye and you say, hey, man, you, you were a legend here in Cincinnati, but we got to let you go. So he, he has a big year. You're signing him to a three-year deal. How much per year is he getting paid? I mean, probably top five receivers. Oh, really? As a 30 I mean, if the franchise tag is, what, 17? I mean, he's giving – he's getting – I think he's, he's on my – He's free agent next year no matter what. The Bengals are just <laughs> keeping him around to help Joe Burrow out. And you, a classic Bengals homer, are just humping for the team that's broken your heart over and over again and acting like they know what they're doing from a personnel standpoint with this wide receiver who's been treated like garbage for most of his career. Brinson, you keep the Bengals off your mouth, <laughs> off your lips. Off your lips. <laughs> keep my name off your lips you shut your mouth when you're talking to me uh matthew judon will play for the ravens at 16.8 million dollars i don't think that's surprising that's sort of how the ravens do business leonard williams the most hilarious franchise tag of all time they want to see how he fits with the team they uh dave gettleman didn't get enough of a trial run when he gave up a pick for leonard williams in the offseason a third round pick mind you a very good pick 
a tremendous pick. So instead, he needs to see how Leonard Williams fits for 16 games before deciding if he's going to give him uh, an excessive amount of money. This is botched from the beginning by Dave Gettleman. It's quintessential Dave Gettleman. He screwed the pooch. He essentially admitted this offseason that he had to franchise tag Leonard Williams just to keep the media on fans off his back about giving up a third-round pick for a rental in a season in which they won five games. Great job, Dave. Keep it up. Uh, also, Joe also, Judy. by the way, they have to give Leonard Williams the defensive end franchise tag, even though he's a pass rusher because he played a three, four defensive end. So great job guys. Incredible. Um, he is the highest paid giants player this season, uh, barring a surprise blockbuster trade. Jordan Rana notes, James Bradbury, at 16 million, Blake Martinez, 14 million, Nate Solder, 13 million are next into the giants suck. What are you doing? Your four highest paid players on your team are Leonard Williams, James Bradbury, Blake Martinez, and Nate Solder. Those are all free agent or trade acquisitions by Dave Gettleman, who I cannot believe I stumped for when he was in Carolina. He sucks at his job. Yikes. Brinson is angry. Angry At least one of those four guys is good. James Bradbury? He's great. Yeah. But the whole whole reason James Bradbury ended up with Carolina is because Dave Gettleman rescinded the franchise tag for Josh Norman out of spite and then said, I don't pay cornerbacks. Cornerbacks don't deserve money. I'll just draft another one in the draft. And then he paid the same guy five years later. It's insane. You know what else is funny? He drafted a cornerback last year called DeAndre Baker. Yeah. Not great. Had to pay James Bradbury because DeAndre Baker got in trouble this offseason. Shaq Barrett uh, is in a grievance right now trying to get converted to – a defensive end money, he deserves it. He's a pass rusher. Don't be ridiculous. This doesn't need to go to a grievance. What you do is non-pandemic times, you call the local bar and you say, is Shaq Barrett a defensive end or a linebacker? A pass rusher or a linebacker? And when 99 out of 100 people say defensive end and then one drunk guy is passed out of the bar and he doesn't answer, you give him the defensive end money. It's very freaking simple. Uh, Bud Dupree, $15.8 million this year as well as an outside linebacker. I think Bud Dupree probably has the same argument. I'm not going to repeat my points. (sighs) Brandon Scherf and Joe Tooney. Why is Scherf making more than Joe Tooney? Uh, If you're asking questions, you should know the answer to. I think they're both 15. You just pulled a Wilson. You just yelled at Wilson 10 minutes ago for asking a question that no one knew the answer to. I'm looking at Field Yates' tweet. Field is great about these tweets. Always has them ready. He's very... Organized. Well, it's not. It's not correct. They're both at fourteen point <laughs> seven eight million. Okay. Well, he so maybe maybe you should read a, a CBS reporter's tweet, for instance. Oh, you know what? I, you know what I bet. Boom! I dunked on. Oh. Where's the music? Oh, oh, oh. Up high, down hard. <laughs> nice. Um, you know what I bet happened? I bet he ran out of uh, characters, and he decided to round up on uh, on. <laughs> Brandon Scherf. I don't have a problem with either of those guys, but I would work out long-term deals with both. They're both very good guards. Uh, Anthony Harris and Justin Simmons, $11.4 million for safeties. And finally, Hunter Henry, $10.6 million for a tight end. Uh, one, another guy, because I think Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, and Hunter Henry all in the final years of their contract. And maybe Melvin Ingram, too. Um, I want to say – a fifth-year option left, though, right? Who does? Bosa? Mike Williams? Yeah, maybe Bosa. Bosa's in the fifth-year option. Both is in the fifth-year option. Williams has one Did they pick Mike Williams' fifth-year option? I, I don't – I think so. I don't know. I, I was going to say real quick on Matthew Judon. He's had some interesting tweets. Brenton, I know you only read your tweets on Twitter, but other people tweet <laughs> also. And, you know, he tweeted out to Honey Badger, to Tyron Mathieu. He said, hey, how's the real whoa, state? Whoa, 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 whoa. To Bell and who? Who did, who did he tweet out again? What'd I say? So who did he tweet out? Badger? What's his name? What'd I say? I don't He's know. What did you say? Say it again. I don't want to say it again. Say it again. Say it again. again. Say it again. Say it again. I think he uh, said Tyron no, no, Bartholomew. No, no, he said Tyron Mathieu. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> Bartholomew. <laughs> the honey badger. What is honey badger's name? <laughs> what is honey badger's name? Say it, me. Reach. Say it. I'm not saying it. Say it. You have I'm to not. say it. You know what? He can't say it because he's the coach of the Packers. He's not allowed to say the name of a player on another team. What, Breach, what is Judon's first name? Matthew. All right, now what's Tyron's last name? Matthew. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay, anyway. Six years. He's not going to play the Dunk Don music right there. That's like a perfect opportunity. What? Oh, what a big jam! What a big jam! 
Judon is asking him for real estate advice in Kansas City. What does Judon think he's going to get signed by the Chiefs? They just paid Frank Clark. I mean, that just seems like a guy who didn't want to be a franchise tag. That's all I'm saying. And he also gave a shout out to Viacom CBS uh, by tweeting out a SpongeBob SquarePants gif after the tag deadline passed without a contract. It is a sad SpongeBob sitting in a aquarium bar with a coffee, not looking very happy. <laughs> Probably it's, got meme. It's, got a, it's got a meme breach. Probably because somebody called him Matthew Judon. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> uh, it's a gif, Brinson, because there's animation in it. Boom! <laughs> Is that a dunk? Yeah, it's a dunk. Nah. You don't know the Re difference between a meme and a gif. That's almost it's as bad as me mispronouncing a... Honey Badger's name. No, 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 no. That's called no, a No, it's not. You can, you, can, well, you can meme gifs. Gifs can be memes. Breach is reeling. It's rare that you see Breach reeling like this. He's reeling. What? No, I don't know that gifts can gift. be anything because it's Jif. Everybody knows it. Jesus. Oh, boy. You're fired, dude. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> oh, no. That, that, the SpongeBob alone in the thing is a, is a meme. That's okay. A meme. Who cares? Let's go. What if it's, oh, my God. It's 6 o'clock. You need to tweet out that gif and ask people if this is a meme or a gif. <laughs> um. Put it in a poll. We start by talking about peeing on ourselves in the shower, and we close with SpongeBob meme and gifts. This is an adult podcast. It's for adults. Four adults on the same podcast. Talking We're going to edit out the part where I butcher Honey Badger's name, right? No, we are not. We are going to clip that. <laughs> if anything is getting edited out, it's my 45-minute rant. <laughs> In which you did swear multiple times, by the way. That, that's the best part is that since I said it gonna... wasn't going to be that much. Since people are going to stop listening 20 minutes into Dubin's rant, there's only like a 10% chance they're going to make it to talking about. No, no, Devo, will cut, Devo will cut that. And oh, that's cut. going on. the. I've got an empty little pink button here on the, that's, that I'm putting. A, they're, they're cut, the roadcaster buttons are colored. It's going to be red, a new drop. Red top left. Is e, orange is laughs. Oh, boy. Yellow is I'm going to have to re relive that the entire season. Green is the sad trumpet. You should have played that. Uh, blue is Kevin Harlan. Oh! I did. A, I got a Parks and Rec drop. Dubin, have you heard this one yet? For Sean. Tom, Star Wars is not that nerdy. No, Star Wars is not that nerdy. It's not. Everyone's seen it. Everyone's seen Everyone. it. Everyone. Guy's That's where Tyrant Ayu is going to go. In that blue. You're going to replace Star Wars now. You can great. also get another one to make fun of Sean where Ben is like, they would never cancel Game of Thrones. It's a crossover hit. It, it appeals to fantasy and real story. Mm -hmm. like, um, all right, let's get the hell out of here. This podcast is going on way too long. David, thanks for coming on. Thanks for ranting. Uh, Ryan, John, excellent stuff. Uh, Devo tells me I can program up to 64 sounds in the Roadcaster. Oh, boy. Edible. Roadcaster. Uh, they give away free, free equipment, so you should check them out. All right, that's it. That's the show. Talk to you later.